Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. For all the different types of energy sources and the ways to deliver it, most consumers are concerned about one thing. Flip a switch and the lights go on. Joining me to talk about energy and reliability today are Carla Fleming. She's the Director of Marketing for Leaders in Energy. And Carolyn Slaughter, she is the Director of Environmental Policy for the American Public Power Association. Welcome, ladies. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Well, education and marketing, you're trying to get people to talk the right language, mm -hmm. thinking about the different sources. How do you get the message out about, about energy? Well, at Leaders in Energy, we really are about connecting people. So we do it a number of ways. We do it through our online group through LinkedIn, which is Leaders in Energy. We also do it through offline events. So every month we have a series of events that we pick a different topic and talk about um, energy from that perspective. We leverage social media in that discussion to broadcast the message out uh, to folks. Um, we also leverage email in terms of our distribution list to get the message out. And we are also blogging. Uh, it's one of the things where if you come to our website, you look at the blog, we've got everything on a history of um, biofuels to talking about finance issues, uh, to talking about what's going on with um, you know, energy from the perspective of um, how do you, looking at it from an entrepreneurial perspective. Uh, right, then you, the, of course everyone's debating climate change, exactly. they're debating new policy. Exactly. And of course we're dealing with things like uh, weather changes. Exactly. So when we think about weather and the issues around that, we're really trying to get at what moves that issue? Why do people care? What is the impact from an energy perspective? And how do we build resiliency in that whole process? And that's one of the reasons um, for the, our event we had Carolyn. Carolyn, tell us a little bit about the American Public, or I'm sorry, the American Public Power Association and how your work is affecting um, climate change and also uh, reliability. Thank you for the question. The American Public Power Association actually is the national service organization representing over 2,000 community-owned public utility systems across the nation, representing over 4 million customers uh, in the United States. And as a national service organization, we are designed to provide services to our members that help them expand their capabilities in the communities, explain the regulatory changes that are going on in the United States. Uh, we have a number of requirements on the public utility systems that they need to meet in order to maintain their utility systems, making sure it's reliable, it's resilient, and can deal with the extreme weather events that we've increasingly experiencing. Well, weather is a big variable. When people are talking about renewable energy, there's a lot of fear about whether or not it, excuse the pun, <laughs> but if there are changes in the weather or the sun doesn't shine, right. how does that work with a, a power grid that relies on it? And, and how do you create a clean power plant? Sure. So with the extreme weather that we've been experiencing, consumers are more often looking at other ways to provide power. That's not necessarily the traditional power that you would experience. Um, they're looking at renewable energy sources like wind and solar and hydro as a way to get their energy. And with the advent of these technologies, the electric utility system has to be very resilient. It has to deal with storms and it has to provide opportunities for consumers to get back their power at their homes, at hospitals, and um, major critical infrastructures. And so we found ourselves kind of in a situation that you're looking at renewables, you're looking at traditional power sources, and then we have the advent of environmental requirements that are coming out. And they're driving the industry to be more conscious about the types of choices that are out there for consumers. Um, for example, last Monday, the administration, President Obama's administration, issued its final rules for CO2 emissions for existing power plants. And as part of that plan, the administration includes uh, renewables as a major way to get to the goal of 32% CO2 reduction by the year 2030. Now, many in the industry believe that that's a significant and lofty goal. Oh, they were frightened. <laughs> Everyone was like exactly. up in arms. <laughs> they, they were, they were. But looking at the glide path to get to that 2030 goal, realistically, 
um, utilities are ready for the challenge, and many of them have embraced renewables, solar, distributed generation to get there. So you are a remarkable resource. So I want to thank you for that explanation. A lot of people wanted to better understand that regulation as well as others. Is this the kind of speaker that you have at your events? Is this what people look forward to? Exactly, and more. <laughs> Tell me, so the weather event, exactly. who else was there? So Carolyn did a great job of talking about the Clean Power Plan and the conventional power jobs that are coming up as people retire. So meaning there's going to be a, a retirement you know, boom that's going to go on. And we wanted to make sure that that message was heard because a lot of people are concerned about jobs. We also had Chris Strong talk from NOAA talk about extreme weather and what's that, what has that been like in this region and across the country. We also had um, Michael Hyland talk about the power uh, system and the grid and how renewables and distributed generation are integrated and built into the grid. And then we had Deepak Swami from Business Radar talking about the technology changes that are going on in this industry. So this is an example of the types of events that we have where we really explore the issue from different angles. Uh, in our September time frame, we're going to talk about smarter cities. And we're going to really get into how do you look at the um, building a smarter city, what are the components of it, and we'll also have someone from the Netherlands talking about what they're doing um, and leading that charge. This, this is important because we are doing so much development mm -hmm. and people are kind of reinventing their cities. But I want to ask you, Carolyn, before sure. we go, from a human rights standpoint, why is this an important issue that, that people need to be concerned about? Well, affordable electricity is a necessity for, for many communities. Um, public power in particular addresses the community needs. And so in that regard, public power facilities look to those communities to make sure that they're provided low cost electricity and it's reliable electricity. I mean, for a variety of reasons, for health benefits, for um, assisting in making sure students have good education. Well, I, I think that that's one of the things that is often forgotten. So I'm glad we talked a little bit about that. I want to make sure people go to your websites and learn more about your organizations and attend your events. Join the LinkedIn. I want to thank all of our viewers for watching The Sustainable Scoop. I'm Miriam Gennari, back to the news desk.